have done it once. Now you need to do it again. I spoke to him, but I don't know if he understood what I was saying. The Lightman sending us over the top. The whole company. Come on, get ready.
Give your brother his dagger back. I'm sorry, Paul. I... Now get out, you dirty little thief. You're no son of mine.
Dear Paul, here is a copy of the Morse code alphabet I made for you. You probably know it from school. It's a language all its own, which I now speak fluently. Thankfully, my telegraph shelter is in a safe location. Something that's already saved my life twice. I'll be on leave again soon. Will I see you this time? Or will it just be mother again? Please, take good care of her. Your brother. with every day that passes. Please, Mother of Mercy, help me. I can't bear another injection. His father, his society, his poison. He says I am mad. He says the cuckoo is my son. But I know what I know. They've taken everything from me. My children, my language. Even my name. He threw my Bible on the fire and smashed your statues. But they can never take you away from me, Mother of Mercy. Mother of Sorrows.
become as cruel as his father. I can speak neither of the war nor of my lost sons. I am not even permitted in their rooms. The rooms of my own sons. I am not permitted to exist at all. If only I were dead too. Dearest mother, when I hear the cannon's thunder, I can no longer be angry with father. Instead, I worry for all of you. Have you heard from Paul at all? He hasn't replied to a single one of my letters. Johannes. Dearest mother, I am glad that you have at least survived the cold weather. But I know how scarce food has become at home. It would be best if we just surrendered. But I'm sure father doesn't want to hear such talk. He probably thinks that the war will bring him glory and honor. Just like grandfather. Glory and honor perished in the very first winter of this war. How we wanted to go to war. How foolish we were. Nevertheless, I shall write to Father. I am worried about Paul. Johannes, 15th of April, 1917.
darkest hours. It is only music that saves me. Is there a heart in the world that cannot be softened by it? But when Carl plays that terrible orchestrion and his father's music again, I feel sick. The walls crumble, and everything comes crashing down around me. It makes me want to die. But I know where he keeps the key. Stop pushing! It's not my fault you're such a slowpoke. And it's not my fault you can't do a boost up right. I've told you to, no climbing in through the window. But you didn't open the door. I knocked for ages, and no one answered. Oh, boys. Come on in then, but keep the noise down. Your grandfather's sleeping. With the deepest regret, 
We hereby report that the sons of our Director General and grandsons of the great General Lothar von Schmidt, Paul von Schmidt, born 5th of March, 1899, and Johannes von Schmidt, born 3rd of October, 1893, have met their heroic deaths on the Western Front. May they rest in peace. Berlin, 12th of October, 1917. Karl von Schmidt & Co. Paint Factories. May 25th, 1916. Magdalena refuses to accept that both our sons have now taken up service in the name of the Kaiser and the people. This is madness. I never wanted to believe father, but perhaps he was right. Perhaps she cannot be helped. Ever since father came to stay with us nine years ago, she has changed completely. I have administered Quicksilver. After a brief protest, she finally quietened down. Now you're wet too! Stop splashing! Mama, he got water on me and now I'm all wet! Come and sit on the bank with me. There you go. Now, put your feet in the water. Nice and warm, isn't it? Warm and wet. <laughs> Look at the sailboats. They're so fast. I bet they're going to America. From Vanze? The lakes aren't that big. Well, who knows? Maybe they'll find a way. They could sail down the harbor, then the Elbe, and all the way to Hamburg. The gateway to the world. From there, 
Anything's possible. Trees taking root. A gift from Santa Balbina among Carl's father's exotic plants. A piece of my home. Johannes was standing next to me, placing his hand on my shoulder. Herr Dupre was right. With each session we are drawing closer, I can feel it. There has been a spate of strange coincidences. It is a sign. I have been working on the dummy again. 
I'm trying to fill it with life so that Johannes will accept it and finally return to me. the time to take a tour of the house. He didn't want to see the cuckoo. He believes me. When we entered the salon, he said he felt an icy chill right where the old tyrant died. He brought nothing but misfortune upon us, even when he was still alive. Herr Dupre says that the house attracts many angry souls. He says I should use charms, spirit bells, and knocking three times for the Trinity to try and ward them off until our next session. The angels will aid me in this. I want to believe him, but the awful cuckoo knocks too and calls out and wants to eat constantly. It is driving me out of my mind. My ball, and don't you forget it. I just wanted to play with it. Get your own, but mine isn't red. You stubborn little so and so. All right, then, but make sure you bring it back. Promise. I promise.
Pause the playback of my voice on the wax turban after each step until you have correctly completed the step in question. Begin by placing the five silver candlestick holders I sent you on the table. Naturally, you need to have been blessed with holy water. Begin by placing the five silver candlestick holders I sent you on the table. Locked. 
Why didn't you go to war first? Why was it him? I don't want him to go. I must. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> 